Brad Exum, the owner of Fast Diesel Fuel Systems, and this is going to be a series about what air does to your fuel injection system, to your performance, and to your pocketbook. Okay, the first part episode is going to be basically an overview of where the air comes from and what it does in generalities to your fuel system and the life of it, your performance, your regens. Those of you that want some just some general basics and does this make sense episode number one is going to cover that okay then we're going to go back in after those this episode we're going to really dissect this stuff and you have to remember this stuff is from fortune 500 companies that are giving us the documentation the supportive information for why we make the claims that we make i'm going to agree with them on a lot of things and i i think they missed a the boat on a few things and what gives me that inf that claim right there is because I can take information from Cummins, from Caterpillar, add the Cummins service topic to it, which will make sense to you, and I, th I think these guys would need to go back to the drawing board and rewrite this. But that's what we did. We brought information from all over, Raycor, Bosch, Milwaukee School of Engineering, Cat Cummins, Detroit, all these places, and we're going to put it together for you. And I bet... If they did the same thing a long time ago, we wouldn't be having the CP4 lawsuit. So that's what I'm going to do. And I'm going to start off with Caterpillar right here. And they say, normally number two diesel fuel contains about 10% air in solution. Although the air is not visible, when the amount of dissolved air exceeds 10%, fuel rate and power output are reduced. See, I'm going to question that. And I'm going to give you good reason to question it yourself. Then they go into a little bit of air only causes this much performance loss or this much damage and a lot of air does this but they don't define it but they limit how much it, damage it can do and one of the reasons I'm kind of really questioning this they say there's 10% air in stationary fuel well guess how they test their engines they have an engine here fuel tank up on top of the building mm -hmm. gravity feed no vapor no vacuum from and not producing vapor the fuel tanks not sloshing they don't have the hot area to return going back into that tank, agitating their supply tank. They have it going to another tank. Is that why they're making that claim? Because if I go to common service topic back in 1965, and I, this is really interesting, they talk about where excessive amount of air will come from. They brought this article up for the same reason we brought up our problem. Okay, and I'll get back to that. But what they're saying, I took this whole thing and I condensed it down to a few things but I'm gonna make it for where you can read it they're talking about the source of the vapor is the fuel itself like water fuel contains a certain amount of dissolved air depending on the fuel temperature pressure on the fuel specific gravity and the amount of variation to which the fuel has been subjected to which I'm going to show you in our clear fuel tank how every one of those characteristics affects your performance your fuel mileage your dollar your pocketbook so if you take and add those, this is the working environment. What they're testing is test cell conditions. Do you see where I'm going with this? This is a picture that we were getting when we were having the problems. We were going in, we were having our engine worked on under warranty, but the downtime was killing us. And we was telling you, inconsistent performance, inconsistent fuel mileage. I mean, the way that it would idle, the way it would throttle, the manifold pressures, that would, how it would fluctuate. We'd take it in, and give it back. Take it in, but the downtime was killing us. We go, what are you looking for? And they said, air slash fuel restriction. But they weren't looking at the fuel itself. They were looking for fuel leaks, flapper line, uh, flapper valves in the fuel line, so they replaced lines. They even got rid of the 90 degree fittings that create restriction. And we said, well, what about our filter not being full? They said, oh, it's supposed to, that's how it is. Cummins wrote about it back in 1965, about the same thing we were complaining of, about the filter not being full. They said it's okay but this is air that causes all these problems now you go back to caterpillar when we're going to use this along with others and we're going to show you how air destroys fuel injection systems especially now with 30 40 50 000 um, psi pressures remember when some of these articles were written back here this is 2000 2500 psi you know you have a lot less pressure the tolerances weren't as tight air was not as much of a detriment to the injection system as it is now. We're going to bring this document to life. We're going to show how this is going to increase your horsepower, 
can increase your fuel economy, and I'm not guaranteeing it because I don't know how you're going to drive, how you're going to measure it, and the variables out there. But we're going to bring it to life of how it's going to make you money, and it's going to burn more of the fuel that's going into the injection system, make it more efficient. We're going to burn more and make more BTUs for the same amount of fuel, reduce your regens, and give the capability for a better fuel economy, along with all these other articles. So this is episode number one, and the number two, the next one, we're going to be really diving into these and bringing this to life.